Okay, in this tutorial, we're just going to review a couple things. We're going to review the manipulators down here and also the axes because there's just that important. Notice I have set that to normal mode. I'll go back to global mode for a second. I mean, that normal mode saves my tail more times than you can imagine. So let's just go get the cube. We'll review this. The in here's our x axis and y axis, and these are manipulators lined up accordingly x and y like this. All right, so. If I want to rotate on Z, I do RZ like that. All right, but maybe rotate it a little bit like there. And whoops, RZ, I'll rotate it, leave it like this. Now the global axis is still the same. Of course, if I change it to local axis, it'll show the orientation within here like this. All right, so if I was just to put it back in global mode and want to rotate it on X now and press RX, it moves it like this, but if I want to move it according to its rotation with the new axis is R X X to move it like this. Now you guys should be really familiar with all this stuff for starters. All right. And then of course I've showed a lesson where you can actually change it in edit mode. If I just go back here I can put this as global and if you go into edit mode first and get everything and then do R Z like this and then leave it here then global is still the same, but then my local axis is also still the same. So I've changed the orientation altogether like that. Okay, so all right, that's one thing. And another thing are these manipulators here. I'm always setting in this translate manipulator where you just grab it and move it like this, though I tend to want to pr press GX to move it along. It's easier for me to use the keyboard so I don't have to hold down the mouse. But if you like the manipulators, you can also just hold down the shift key and select that one and that one. So then you have your translation, rotation, and scaling manipulators all on the screen at the same time. So there's my translation like this. And the square is your scaling on X. And your rotation here, you just grab this and you can rotate it like that. So that's in case you like the manipulators. All right. And then the other mode we're going to use, though, really, really important, I mean really important, is the normal axis. All right, And we'll use it with the, this object here because it has the faces pointing in all these different directions. So I'll go into edit mode, and I'm in global axis mode here. I'll do face select for starters. And if I grab a face here, notice my global Z axis is pointed straight up. In fact, no matter which one I pick, even though it's orientation, global Z is always there like you would expect. So let's try it in local mode. And local local still has this pointed up in that way because we haven't changed the object any like that. But let's actually go back out of here and rotate this a little bit. Let's just do RR and rotate it somewhat. And then in local mode, local is now pointing in its rotation. But that doesn't help me if I want to do my editing. So if I wanted to take this object and move it, if I'm moving it here, it's a lot of times you're trying to move things straight out in a normal direction, basically perpendicular to the face or to uh, average of the points around the vertex. So that's where the normal mode really comes into play. So you move it into normal mode and then every one you select just sticks straight out from the face like that, perpendicular to the face, and then you can move it on Z. Of course, if you try to just do GZ by itself, it's going to work the global axis, but this works like the local thing. I'll skip that, and you have to press GZZ, and then you work it on the normal axis like this. And then the same thing applies if you go into vertex select mode and click a vertex with normal axis set, then same thing. It's using the average of these normals that surround the particular vertex, and it comes straight out from here, or if you want to do it with the mouse again, I mean with the keyboard you have to press GZZ and it runs it straight out like that. They're really useful tools. If you're new to Blender, these are not quite so obvious and uh, it's always good for review anyway. And so, okay, that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson.